One of the most effective tools authoritarians use to enforce a system of conformity is to insinuate that questioning such systems makes the individual childish and dysfunctional. For example, most of us grew up seeing our parents and other adults around us work their full-time, 40 hours a week jobs as if it was a normal part of life that we would eventually participate in too. By the time you're born, your parents might have enough experience coping with the high demands of full-time work that you don't see the symptoms, especially since you're not experienced with reading emotional cues at that age either. When people do get into their first full-time job, they're confused. How were my parents and other adults around me able to seemingly handle this like it was no big deal? Why is full-time work so hard for me to handle? Am I dysfunctional? Am I lazy? This line of thinking makes it difficult to be honest about these struggles because it paints you as being the odd one out for not having understood the facade at hand yet. Those that do overcome the stigma to ask these questions realize that this is the seemingly necessary evil of adult life, and that coping with it just so happens to be a big part of adulting. Many uncritically accept this system because of the perceived normalcy of such work. The hypnotist scene from the hit movie Office Space comes to mind, and the specific request Peter has for the session perfectly encapsulates how many people wish they could cope with this newfound struggle of adult life. Is there any way that you could sort of just zonk me out so that, like, I, I don't know that I'm at work in here? Could I come home and think that I've been fishing all day or something? These people see the final boss of all-time vampires that is a lifelong career, and their immediate choice is dissociation and disillusion. One could say it's a coward's suicide. You're faced with the majority of your waking life being spent at a job, and you wish to not mentally exist during those times, but don't want to trade your life for the comfort of ultimate, albeit unhealthy, escapism. However, looking critically at the big picture is when this all falls apart. I'm born, spend most of my childhood in school, most of my adulthood at work, potentially retire, and then die. Is this all life really is? Why do we find it acceptable to ask everyone to surrender the majority of their waking hours, not to mention their energy and health, just to earn survival as a privilege, despite living in the most advanced age of humanity in all of history? I'd argue that it's these questions that propel a person into being a revolutionary thinker. They have learned to question the nature of things that they'd been previously conditioned to feel are natural and necessary, even if wavering their support of such things is considered shameful or irresponsible. But this video isn't about work. That's only one aspect of the main topic at hand, adulting. Just like work, complaining about the plethora of responsibilities one has to deal with as an adult is similarly shamed with accusations of laziness and irresponsibility. But once again, this foundation of society should be questioned because it is as nonsensical as the modern work ethic. Starting with the thing most people love to half-jokingly associate with adulting, taxes. Obviously, you have to pay them, but the process of filing for them is arduous. Up until recently in America, there was no way to file them for free online because a group of corporations that influence our government dissuade a free option from ever being made. Even putting aside how ironic it is that many people have to pay to use a service just to do something they are legally required to do as a working adult, the process in general is hogwash. As an American, it's your responsibility to keep track of your W-2, miscellaneous incomes, answer questions that might imply tax penalties, etc., etc. Meanwhile, in many European countries, taxes are just a bill you're sent, you apply deductions, and it's over and done with. Some of those same countries even tell you exactly where each penny of your tax dollars went. If you complain about having to do your taxes in America, it's not taken as a legitimate critique of the system. It's just seen as the whining of a lazy person who doesn't have the personal responsibility to function as an adult. One common theme that will start to become more obvious as I discuss some other absurd expectations of adulting is the problem of excess responsibility. This is not the assumption that the average person is too stupid or negligent to handle personal responsibility, but rather that they are made responsible for unnecessary things that would be handled better by someone else anyways. Speaking of taxes, those aforementioned European countries usually contribute taxes towards a single-payer healthcare system. Healthcare is not like most other products in the market because it's inelastic in demand. The question, how much healthcare would you like to buy, is simply nonsensical because this is a human need, not a cup of coffee or a bag of chips, and thus something you cannot stretch and change your consumption of. Despite this, you're expected as an adult to not only pretend as if such a system is sensical, but now have to worry about providers, plans, denials, deductibles, premiums, what is and is not out of network, whether you also get dental or vision covered, as if healthcare needs a fucking a la carte system, and genuinely, 
this is just something we don't need to do. None of these complications are here at the benefit of the potential patient of the healthcare system, nor is it great for anyone working within said system because it's a shitload of extra paperwork for them to do on their end. Despite all this, navigating the overly complicated healthcare system, just like our overly complicated tax system, is a tenant of what functioning adults do. I could go on and on about other needlessly complicated systems you have to navigate as an adult, but adulting is a lot more than having to fight those systems. It's also about all the new things you have to keep track of. As an adult, you've got to keep track of your paydays, your various bills, such as rent, internet, electric, water, and credit card, which are usually not on the same day. Not to mention whatever fees you're paying for subscription services, since we're in the digital age, appointments you have for meetings, training, doctor visits, or prescription refills, and also budgeting for your bills, groceries, entertainment, savings, if you're lucky, keeping up with renewals for your ID, membership, subscriptions, etc., etc. The list goes on and on. You practically worked stupid, not to mention subjected to an unhealthy environment that disables you because of the pollution, poor food, and lack of casual exercise opportunities, and are expected to juggle around all of these different things that barely even scratch upon the surface of all the complexities of adult life. And above all else, saying adulting is hard still gets you painted as an incompetent twat. A lot of these things don't need to be so unnecessarily difficult, but it is within these responsibilities that the cracks upon which people slip through open up. Maybe while balancing all of those spinning plates, you miss some required paperwork for your government benefits. Maybe you get a fine because you forgot to keep the tabs on your car up to date, and now that gets in the way of your ability to juggle your expenses. Maybe your paycheck comes in late, but your automatic bills already went through, prompting an overdraft fee from your bank. Being poor isn't just expensive in terms of money, but it's also expensive in terms of time, as these are extra things you now have to keep track of that more well-to-do people never need to stress over or deal with in the first place since they have more breathing room to work with. The life experiences of U.S. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez backs up this sociological observation when she said the following in a 2019 tweet thread, quote, Going from waitressing a year ago to now carries a lot of life adjustments, but three paychecks in has shown me how one of the greatest scams in the U.S. is the idea that financial struggle is due to poor character. When I was waitressing, I used to jerk awake in the middle of sleep, worried I might have forgotten if a bill cleared or if I had enough money to pay a doctor in cash. Was that because I was irresponsible? No, it's because I wasn't being paid a living wage as the cost of living skyrocketed. Now I'm going through a huge income transition compared to living off of tips, and I have health insurance, which now means fewer expenses. According to banks, I'd be more responsible, but my character hasn't changed, just my math. While I do very much want to make the point here that adulting is a scam and is unfair for everyone because of the immensity and complexities, it also disproportionately affects the less fortunate because they need more help and are less capable as a consequence of their limited resources. Making sure you clear your bills, keep your benefits, or are able to pay for something in cash means not tripping on a hurdle that leads to the slippery slope of instability. Back to talking about adulting more generally, this is part of the reason old heads say that things were just simpler back then. Part of that sentiment is definitely because they consider the new times too complicated and let their stubbornness get in the way of keeping up, but some of it is a genuine reaction to how being a functioning adult is much harder and requires you to keep an eye on so many things that overwhelming doesn't even begin to cover it. Ponder this for a moment. How much of that forgetfulness is actually your old age, and how much of it stems from needing to keep seven different reminders, plans, and upcoming events in your head because missing one can make it take so much time in your schedule that it fucks the other six? Part of the disconnect between the old-timers and young people like me is that our culture is very personal. We're trying to build lives where we aren't juggling so many plates so we can have the privilege of actually listening when our friends speak. The kind of people who say, yeah, sure, and not, ah, shit, really, when you ask them for a favor. We've seen value in mutual aid, and a big part of that is defending your brain's free space by rejecting the wedding rings, the dryer sheets, and the suits. The distractions of not only the dying old world, but also of modern excess responsibility dressed in the wrapping paper of adulting. This isn't to say that personal responsibility itself is a distraction, but rather that excess responsibility makes it hard to be responsible for other things like your community, your friends, and your future. We don't complain about these things because we're lazy or irresponsible. We're coming into this world watching a million lives unlived at the hands of the 40-hour workweek and adulting and erratically exercising the choice to critique and abstain so we don't end up another body on the pile of wasted potential.